All right. Hello, everyone. This is our research group for the Acadiana Center for the Arts Research. My name is Jacob Remel. I'm accompanied by Sam Yushiko, Ali Horton, and Eve Domini. Want to start us off, Allie? Okay. Um, hi, I'm Allie. Um, I'll be talking about the executive summary that you can see in our research paper, and I'll be doing the intro. Um, so basically, our mission with this research project was to um, audit the social, social media presence for the ACA and kind of offer some suggestions on how they can tweak things and make things more encouraging for a stronger media presence on social media. Um, so the ACA is a nonprofit, as you guys know, and uh, that supports and showcases art and culture from Acadiana. Um, they support the new creation of festivals, public art exhibits, performances, and other things. Um, their work spreads across an eight-parish region uh, called Acadiana. And within these parishes, the company also serves to support local schools, individual students, and teachers through several different programs to interact with these communities. Uh, the ACA operates five different social media accounts, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, and YouTube, which we have audited. And I think Eve is next. My name's Eve Dominic. I'll be talking about a little bit of our background research that we did. So as Ali stated, our group was focusing on the social media aspect. And as more people are becoming aware of, the changes in social media nowadays are just nonstop. They require constant attention, but they're worth it because if used correctly, the social media platforms can offer real-time interactions with community members and it can provide really easy ways to release information and have the potential to reach any user of that social media site. But to maintain a strong online presence really is, takes a lot of work and organizations are now implementing strategies so that their social media efforts really don't go to waste. The involvement for successful social media really relies on the organization continually reinforcing multiple efforts. As Ali stated, our research shows that ACTA currently has the operating platforms on Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, and YouTube, but we noticed that Facebook is their most active and most popular account. So after looking at this information and Coupled with a suggestion from some of our interviewees, we decided to conduct an extensive Facebook audit, kind of going off of research questions like what platform does the ACA primarily operate through, what type of posts generate the most impressions, how do we generate traffic back to the main ACA website, and a couple of other questions like those. All right. My name is Jacob Remel, and I'll be covering uh, methods, participants, findings, and analysis. For the methods, Dr. Madison, with his graduate students, actually conducted a student survey that focused on the perceptions and opinions that they had when talking about the ACA. The survey recorded the demographics of students, so we were able to understand how different cultures or certain backgrounds played into their uh, ideologies. The graduate students actually distributed their survey through social media, and that was how they were able to accrue about 100 responses, more or less. So Dr. Madison and the graduate students had their own research and surveys happening. In the meantime, our group uh, wanted to focus on some recommendations offered by our participants, and we had two very crucial participants. We had Dan Hare, who has worked for the university for a total of 30 years. 20 being dedicated to the UL Alumni Association and 10 with Student Affairs. He was the previous president of the Board of Directors for PASA, which later merged with the ACA. Right now, or he was the president of PASA, and now he serves as the president of the Board of Directors for the ACA. The interview conducted with Dan Hare was through a group voice call, and that way we were able to determine in more lackadaisical settings uh, 
exactly what the ACA needs from social media, how they spread prior to, and why it is important to beef everything up, not including uh, Facebook, which is what we primarily focused on. We also spoke with Sam Oliver, the current executive director, director of the Acadiana Center for the Arts. Sam actively contributes to their social media efforts. He appears in multiple updates, including recent updates about the COVID-19 pandemic. And he's also been seen on local news stations, local Louisiana news stations, to discuss matters involved with the ACA. Essentially, we had two incredibly crucial sources of information to kind of guide us. And we really wanted to know, for the ACA, what's their most prominent platform and where can they reach a larger audience? Where do they want to get a larger audience? And from both of their responses, we found that Facebook really was their best platform. That leads us into finding an analysis. In order for us to actually measure the success of Facebook, uh, the ACA's Facebook, we wanted to do a deep dive and analyze every single post from May, uh, May 2nd, 2020, back until December 2nd, 2019. So we did a full six-month audit recording the likes and type of content of every single post in that time period. Originally, we wanted to include comments and shares, but I could literally count the number of those on my right hand. So the, the, it, we didn't need math to understand that they were severely under par. In that six-month six time period, we found a total of 142 posts, and those posts generated 2,240 likes. However, when we were doing our six-month audit, we noticed that there were some severe outlier posts, whereas for a long period of time, we would see posts getting no more than five likes. All of a sudden, there's this post with nearly 200 likes. So we wanted to make sure that when we recorded our average number of likes, per post on the ACA, we wanted to remove those outliers. So we know that on a general basis, a normal post, this is what the ACA gets. Uh, we were able to determine that in those 142 posts that there was 17 outliers, and those outliers were determined through the interquartile range to start at 28 likes. So anytime a post got a 28 likes from the ACA, that was considered an outlier. Um, any, any posts with zero likes were not considered an outlier. Um, these posts included photographs, text posts, video content, event graphics. Any As you appear on the ACA page, any post that you can see is what we recorded for six months. Uh, we learned that on average, a typical post from the ACA generates about seven likes, more or less. Um, we noticed that the largest volume of posts from the ACA was news about upcoming events, and we really think it should stay that way. The ACA predominantly operates in events and local uh, interactions with the community, so that wasn't a surprise for us at all, and we think it should stay that way. Interestingly enough, shared links, so content not posted by the ACA, was found to be a pretty large category on the ACA's page. Uh, recently, we saw a surge in COVID-19 uh, content uh, hovering at 13%. So we were able to determine exactly how many of certain types of posts the ACA po uh, created and then how many likes each of those categories generated. We had 13 categories for the different types of posts, uh, including things like the COVID-related content, photographs of art, membership information, miscellaneous being... Uh, posting about the recent passing of a community member or posting about a holiday, things that weren't intrinsically tied to the organization, but they still felt the need to comment on. Uh, we also had news about upcoming events, news about exhibits, the typical uh, content categories you would expect from a nonprofit organization that does local events. We are able to get some really nice um, info, uh, visuals out of it as well. So as you can see on this graph, it shows which type of content was posted the most, the most being news about upcoming events, the second and third most being shared links in the COVID-related content. This is just a bar graph visual of it. And we noticed on this graph when we punched the data in, the average number of likes per type of Facebook post Contest was our biggest category by a significant margin, but contest, if we were to refer back to the bar graph, only has 
two posts. So we notice that, and one of the posts being the most liked post in the six month time period. So we notice that <laughs> whenever people get free things through a social media post, they tend to like it a little bit more. But it did generate a lot of traffic, a lot more than what the ACA normally gets. So we think that this is a crucial piece of information that we'll touch upon later. Um, we also mentioned briefly during our preparation of this document that we wanted the ACA to maybe do some type of discounted membership program. And recently in our six month audit, we found that they did that exact thing. It generated a lot of content, uh, an average of 61 likes per post related to that. Um, another interesting category is photographs of art. Anytime that ACA without caption, without any background information, if they just posted pictures of local art, automatically a lot of likes were generated. So through the math, we were able to see some really interesting things about the updates, about the uh, logistics of Facebook. Instagram, Facebook was our, our biggest dive into, but we also did want to touch ground a little bit on some other platforms, see how they were doing. We found an Instagram engagement calculator, which determined that 0.79% of interactions happen per post which is about 30 likes for about 3,000 followers. Um, we think the ACA thrives on picture-based content, but 32 likes is for 3,000 followers still a little bit low, so maybe we need to see an update in quality or maybe a restructuring. We also talked about uh, some stuff related to live stories. Yep, 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 Instagram. Interestingly enough, a couple of weeks ago, the ACA launched a YouTube account, which solely features uh, videos from Pace Online, which is a sort of uh, artistic teaching sermon that happens through this uh, YouTube account. Uh, oddly enough, the Acadiana Center for the Arts does not have any links to their other social media on YouTube, and their other social media doesn't have a link to their YouTube. So it's a pretty unheard of new platform extension by the ACA. If you can see in the screenshot, they averaged four, eight, three views. It seemed pretty untalked about. Um, I imagine if you're finding out about the ACA solely through YouTube, you wouldn't really know what the organization's about. And you actually would probably have a misconstrued notion as the ACA is not solely Pace Online or working with Pace Online. So we believe there's a few uh, touch-ups that they could do on their Instagram and their YouTube and even their LinkedIn. But since our interviews and understanding led us back to Facebook, that's where the bulk of our information and research went to. Um, yeah. So, Sam, if you want to go over cl uh, client recommendations. Alrighty, uh, yeah, my name is Sam Uwiko, and I'll kind of touch on just some of the things that... Um, we think could definitely go in helping the ACA on some of these platforms like Jacob kind of covered. Um, with Facebook, we definitely suggest more contests, especially in a time right now when a lot of people are on the app. Um, you a lot of times see like and share contests where you require um, the people to basically share the content in order to um, either get another um, kind of vote or to kind of be eligible to win whatever it is you're offering. Um, so we definitely think that's something that's worthwhile on Facebook, as well as more posts of um, art and the music. I think that's a big thing right now. You see a lot of different organizations, even in Lafayette alone, utilizing um, the live feature no matter what platform they're on, whether it's Instagram or Facebook. Um, and you can also certainly tie those live platforms with um, donation tags and things like that. Um, so that's definitely something we suggest is more live content. And I know that um, that's been ramped up on Instagram a bit, uh, but definitely um, continue to utilize the live portion of these apps. Um, and you can directly see how many people tune in. They can comment, so you can kind of have some interaction with your audience, which is really nice with the artist um, or the curator. Um, another thing that we wanted to touch on was the LinkedIn profile. Now, I know that's not necessarily a profile that um, you would post a lot of 
art and videos on, but we do feel like LinkedIn is a great way to establish some credibility um, and kind of interact with different nonprofit organizations and leaders in the community. Um, and right now, when we check the LinkedIn profile, it currently just had kind of a, a simple bio of the ACA from the website, um, and it didn't really link to much else. So we think some some more posts on LinkedIn would be helpful. Uh, one thing that we talked about in our paper specifically was that um, many organizations utilize LinkedIn uh, and that current employees may feel a sense of pride by sharing what they're working on on that platform and other people can comment, especially to kind of reach an audience in college. More and more students are being encouraged uh, to get on LinkedIn and to create profiles so that they can learn about volunteer opportunities and potential job offers. So um, you may be able to reach a new section of volunteers uh, just through LinkedIn alone. So that is another one of our big suggestions. Um, on to YouTube, like Jacob also covered currently, the videos up are the Pace videos. Um, and the views are, are kind of low as of now when I know a lot of people are getting on YouTube given staying home a bit more and looking for different types of entertainment. One of the things that we want to suggest would be uh, an artist spotlight, whether it's a, a painter um, or some type of musician or someone in a theater group. Um, these are great ways to kind of get involvement in the community and help people learn about um, who's performing possibly right down the road from them. Um, they've been really successful on other platforms and YouTube pages. Uh, for instance, I, I think of the NPR Tiny Desk Concert. That's a very popular um, kind of spotlight thing that NPR does. Um, and they get a lot of views and those videos get shared all over. So you never know um, where one video could take the ACA. It could get shared um, you know, nationally, worldwide, and all of a sudden you've got a whole new uh, influx of people coming and checking out the page. So that's definitely another thing we suggest on YouTube is making sure that um, the content on there is kind of uh, mixed up a bit and not just all of the pace. Um, and you can obviously organize that too on the YouTube channel. So you can have people go on there onto the platform and clearly see what they're looking for. Um, and we also would suggest linking, like Jacob mentioned, linking other forms of social media on the YouTube account so that people can go click and check out the Instagram or the Facebook, but also on Facebook and Instagram and LinkedIn, making sure we link the YouTube account. That way um, people can kind of get a better idea of the work in action or what uh, the ACA is currently trying to promote. Um, and so those are kind of our, our big suggestions for the ACA given our research and what we covered. Mm -hmm. And I believe that sums everything up. We implore you if you want to know about the nitty gritty details or maybe the evidence that we found. We really want you to just check out the art, the actual paper itself. We didn't want to bog it down too, too much by going over each individual statistic. Um, we're excited are all listed, the appendixes, everything. So that'll be it. Thank you so much. Thank you, guys.